This episode of the Dungeon Cast is brought to you by Curse of the Usurper, Trouble and Havdir from Tomb Guardians, Inc. Trouble and Havdir is the exciting first book of the Curse of the Usurper adventure and campaign setting for 5th edition. The Curse of the Usurper as a whole takes characters from level 1 to 15. Trouble and Havdir provides lore, shops, adventures, and so much more within the thriving city of Havdir. After becoming afflicted with an ancient curse, the characters must search for a cure along the way. They are presented with many paths and opportunities to explore a pirate island, to help the people of Havdir to engage in animated tentacle arm wrestling, to negotiate with politicians, to battle bugbears, and to clamber through the tower of a mad mage. And those are just a few of the possibilities. And I have to say, looking through this book, uh, this this book is clean and gorgeous to look at. The, the artwork is absolutely stunning. Um, it looks really easy to navigate. As someone who's writing a book myself. Yeah, I, I agree with the colors really pop in here. The artwork is great to look at. And um, it, it looks very well put together. I like that it had like little QR codes on some of yeah. the uh, like character reads. Absolutely. So you can, you can go to that QR link. Mm-hmm. It's going to take you to Dropbox and give you an audio file to play. So you can just play the 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 audio live for yeah your players. and it, it seems when looking through it it seems like it's set up for like setting scenes or like really intense character dialogue that your characters are going to overhear and it's fully voice acted it sounds incredible yeah there's um it looks like there's a lot of cool characters and uh special items in here uh a lot of stuff that you can add to your game or you know just i would just run this module it looks pretty fun yeah and it's supposedly a single book uh, the first book of a three book collection. Mm-hmm. So this is the first part of the adventure. Um, so yeah, Curse of the Usurper, Trouble and Have Dear by Tomb Guardians Inc. Yeah, five E compatible. Go check it out. Indeed, links in the description. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian and I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about everything tabletop role playing games. And today we are talking about the Crenshinabon. One, two, three, four. Shout out to- Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How you doing today? I'm fucking hungry. I love Cinnabons. <laughs> so, when I wrote this episode into our schedule about a year ago, I was like, there's going to be a Cinnabon joke. <laughs> and I, I knew it was coming. I didn't know it was going to be the first line, though. Yeah, there it is. It's, it's right I, there. I didn't think there was a better time, but if there is a better time, I'll just fucking say I mean, it again. We'll see. This is going to be a, maybe a long episode. I think this is a 10, 11-pager Crenshin- on the note. Cinnabon. The Crenshinnabon. So, the Crenshinabon, also Uh known as the Crystal Shard, is a strange and extremely powerful artifact. Some would even count it amongst the absolutely most artifacts in all of Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, It has had a prominent place in both D&D novels and a couple adventures, but despite this, it has only ever been statted out in an official capacity one time, all the way back in 2nd edition, 1996. So we're going to read some black and white stat block today? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at what second edition artifact stat blocks look like, which is not so much stat blocks as in like three pages of just prose. So, okay, got it. <laughs> we'll get to that. That'll be towards the end of the episode. Um, at least I couldn't find any other officially statted out versions. I found plenty plenty of homebrew ones though. Mm. But oddly enough, I think that this isn't the worst thing for this artifact in particular because this artifact is. More so than most artifacts, a plot device and a MacGuffin rather than an item your player should actually be getting their hands on. Oh, like the using of the item might be like the final scene of blah, blah, blah. Maybe I could see that. It's more like along the lines of like, if your BBEG of your campaign gets a hold of this, here's the adventure and it's about to get crazy for the next six levels. I see. And then you just and chase then, it. And yeah. Yeah. You'll, you'll see. It's, it's a very unique item. Um, the Crenshinabon featured most heavily in R.A. Salvatore's Drizzt novels, specifically. Mm. Uh, the Crystal Shard, Passage to Dawn, The Silent Blade, Servant of the Shard, and The Ghost King. So five novels, all written by our friend R.A. Salvatore. So we have a lot of Drizzt fans with their ears. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll oh, get ready right to now. get so upset because I've never read these books, <laughs> nor am I a Forgotten Realms fan. So th- a lot of this is like secondhand reading knowledge that, you know... Is only going to be so correct, but so take take what I say with a grain of salt. But also, like here is the 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 basics of it. Gotcha. Okay. <clears throat> so listeners who are big on Driz fans are probably intimately familiar with the Crenshinabon and what it's capable of. That being said, I have not read these novels, <laughs> and I will also preface this with saying that even though I have a huge amount of respect for Ari Salvatore, who's been a wonderful guest on this show. Uh, yeah, he's been on the uh, show. We've spoken to he, him personally, and for the characters and the mythos that he's responsible for. 
like the effect he's had on the zeitgeist of D and D. Yeah, I cannot call myself what one would say is a true fan of Drift Stewart and or the Forgotten Realms for that matter. They are cool. I appreciate them. But my personal bag is my own homebrew settings and being able to grab inspiration and set pieces from the various official settings, lore, adventures for the stories that I want to tell or be involved in. I think it's the same for a lot of people. Yeah, I'm pretty much in the same bag here. Like it sounds all the stories sound great and cool. And maybe if I get some like a bunch of free time, I'll Mm -hmm. cut into them. But for now, with the way life goes now, (laughs) not not now, Uh, but always nice to hear about it. I mean, there are some very fantastic adventures that yeah. this character partakes uh, in. Just to give a, an example of like how I feel about Forgotten Realms, I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3 right now. It's amazing. It nice. really is. But the least interesting thing for me is that it's set in the Forgotten Realms. I don't really care about that part. I just, I'm enjoying the story and the characters and, and how things are going. But Forgotten Realms just, it's kind of like, it's cool, but it's neither here nor there for me. So that being said, I find the Crenshinabon to be a fantastic set piece for any D&D setting, which is why I chose it for today's episode topic. So let's get into it. All right. Let's go. The Crenn in. <laughs> the Cinnabon. Suit, let's just dive in. Get deep like Dave. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> the Crenshinabon is actually pretty warm, but we'll get into it. The Crenshinabon is, as far as artifacts go, a simplistic item to describe. It is said to be an ancient relic of chaos and evil. This vile artifact appears as a one-foot-long, four-sided, pulsating crystal that is tapered like an icicle and glows with an emerald hue. Why is it pulsating? With light, or is it like with light? Okay, it's pulsating with light. You're right. It, I didn't write light in there. <laughs> I just, you know, why is it pulsating? There's just been so many dick jokes. There's been so like many. lately on the show. I we'll have see to ask if we can get it through a single episode of that one. Okay, so Krenshinabon, the Krenshinabon, um, is a vile relic of immense power, a crystal shard that draws its magical energy from the light of the sun. It is a sentient artifact and possesses a never-ending hunger for power and glory at whatever the cost. Mm. The Crenshinabon is not a reasonable being, despite its sentience. Its instinctual hunger uh, for power uh, overrides all other logic and machinations that it has. Okay, so it could, as a decision maker, do something not optimal to gain power. Right, exactly, okay. yes. As such, the Crenshinabon always desires a powerful wielder, usually a corruptible Magic user. Yes, someone it can control. Indeed. Because this thing doesn't have legs. It, it might, does not have legs. It might pulse, but it can't walk. <laughs> Much like a dick. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Drizzt, uh, Duarden fans. I'm going to make jokes. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what this show is. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be mad, though. Yeah, they'll be fine. The Crystal <laughs> Shard uh, will insidiously and actively attempt to manipulate its wielder to further its own ends and will readily abandon them for someone seen as more capable of furthering its goals of ultimate conquest. The relic can even go as far as luring in thousands of evil-intentioned beings with its magical call, creating a grand army for its wielder and so-called master, or finding a replacement for them if it so wishes. Oh, man, there's so many magic items that do this, too. <laughs> it's cool. It's, it's a sh- good strat. Yeah, it, it really is. Uh, the shard's primary tactic is to target the ego, collecting slaves with the promises of greatness, riches, power, and anything the heart desires. Because of this tactic, and in my opinion due to the very nature of the Krenshinabon, it holds little to no sway over true paladins and virtuous priests on righteous kings and noble commoners, but one who desires more and is not above deception and destruction to further their ends will inevitably sink into the Krenshinabon's grass. Yeah, you find the cracks in the lawful good. Yeah. You, yeah. Get, you can get in there, you get, get in your there. little fingies in there. <laughs> Essentially, anyone with a truly peaceful, altruistic, and or humble heart and mind is immune to the Krenshinabon's influence. You must be unbreakable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is said that the Crystal Shard is endowed with a utterly evil power-craving intelligence that serves the cause of pure chaos. It is actively sought by many fiends of the lower planes, including Urtu, our first character of today's episode, All right. a powerful Balor and eternal enemy of Driz Durden, uh, who was said to be there at the moment of the Krenshinabon's creation. Any of these evil beings, be they mere fiend or demon lord, will seek out the artifact if an opportunity presents itself. Wow. Okay. That's a big That's a big bad guy that he's got in his... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Who he's like faced off with quite a few what times. What do they call it? Um... The rogues gallery rogues gallery yeah, yeah. yeah definitely <laughs> definitely so let's talk about the history of the Krenshinabon. the crystal shard was forged by a conclave of seven liches millennia ago in a distant crystal sphere i.e greyhawk um oh earth if we're being 
Uh-huh. By the way, I was reading that O Earth, which is very, very obviously spelled O Earth. It was originally supposed to be pronounced just as Earth, which is like, well, then why did you change the spelling at all? Uh, because it looks cool when you read it. It looks fantasy. It does, I guess. Also, like vowels are so interchangeable. Like, who gives? Like, I'll just fucking do whatever I want. Vowels. They don't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> These liches set out to fashion an item of the very greatest power. And as an insult to the peoples these undead wizard kings plan to conquer, they designed the artifact to draw its strength from the sun itself, the giver of life. Cool. Upon the artifact's completion, the liches were consumed by the overwhelming power of the artifact. The conscious aspects of them were obliterated (laughs) by the relic's sun-like properties and shattered pieces of their spirits. And the shattered pieces of their spirits were absorbed by the artifact. So they made it powered by the sun, the most powerful thing around, and then it became that, like, super powerful. It did, but also it's like, you guys are liches. Like, you guys are technically not weak to sunlight, but, like, sunlight and you guys don't mix. Uh, And you made a sunlight artifact. And didn't expect it to have a bad repercussion on you. Right, and it did a corruptible thing. Yeah, they were making bad decisions for power. Mm -hmm, Exactly. Yeah, non-optimal decisions to be powerful. That's exactly right. Okay. The Krenshinabon first came to the material world of Eberatoril, which is the the planet of Forgotten Realms. Faerun is like the major continent. Yeah, the land. Stuff happens, Mm -hmm. but Eberatoril is the planet. It's got a sword coast. It's actually like the double planet. We're not going to get into that today. Okay. Um, Millennia ago in the distant land of Zakara. At the time, the artifact was seen merely as a wizard's tool, though a great and powerful one. It could throw fireballs and create great blazing walls of light so intense that they could burn flesh from bone. Little was known about the Crystal Shard's dark and sinister past until it fell into the hands of a sultan. This great leader learned the truth about Krenshinabon, and with the help of his many court wizards, decided that the work of the liches was incomplete. Mm. This sultan, however, had no dreams of domination. He only wanted peaceful existence with his many warlike neighbors. Hey, they did good, but they all got absorbed before they finished it. Okay. (laughs) Using the newest power of the artifact, the sultan created a line of crystalline towers that stretched from his capital across the empty desert to his kingdom's second city, an oft-rated frontier city about a day's travel away in intervals. He raised as many as a hundred of these towers, nearly completing the defensive line. However... The sultan had overestimated the powers of the Krenshinabon. Uh, he believed that the creation of the towers would strengthen the artifact, you know, like more surface area. Oh, like, okay. Like, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like solar, uh, like panels. solar panels. Yeah. <laughs> like Bulbasaurs. Like Bulbasaurs. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, and normally they would have had not so many been created, but he was pulling the manifestations of the Krenshinabon too thin. Mm. Soon after the sultan's raising of the towers, a great sandstorm manifested and swept across the desert, shattering the weakened crystalline towers. This sandstorm served as a precursor to an invasion by a neighboring sheikdom. The hordes overran the sultan's kingdoms, and the merciless sheik forced the sultan to watch as his family was murdered. The Krenshinabon absorbed a piece of the sultan's spirit in that moment. Finally, with this quote-unquote second creation, the Krenshinabon was complete. Okay. The artifact imbued with the twisted aspects of seven dead liches and with the wounded and tormented spirit of the sultan would now begin its desperate quest to attain and maintain its greatest level of power, whatever the cost. So does that mean that the the item had its own its own consciousness and then absorb these other ones and like they melded together is that what i'm that's what i get out of it and i also think that like it's not so much that it absorbed the sultan in this moment that like led to its second creation i think it was the experience of almost breaking Uh uh-huh and then also just being exposed to like the terrible torture and death all around it that it was like it it decided to take its destiny into its own hands it's like no 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 i don't like any of this i want to become the most powerful thing ever and then take over everything, and then I'll never break again. It's a born-again artifact. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> so let's rewind the clock a little bit, just for a second. Um, the demon lord Urtu, the Balor we mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. who is both a Balor and a demon lord. Um, okay, they're just a really strong Balor. Yeah, they're like a super strong Balor. I'm a super like, Balor. I'm yeah. a demon lord level Balor. By the way, I don't know if we mentioned this in the Balor episode, but the reason Balors are called Balor is because the original most powerful Balor was a demon cult named Balor, and so they were all just named after him. <laughs> it's the chaos. It just keeps on. It's like, I don't know. We're not going to figure it out right now. We're all, we are Balor. We are Balor, yeah. <laughs> bum, 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 so bum. the demon lord Urtu, the Balor we mentioned earlier, was present at the creation of the Krenshinabon, but was hurled back to the abyss by the burst of power that heralded the artifact's coalescence. 
Urtu presumed the crystal had not survived that original explosion until it stumbled across. He stumbled across the shard's trail centuries later with the discovery of a crystal tower whose pulsating heart was the exact image of the crystal shard. It's like that classic, like I threw them down uh, like a waterfall or like I hit them with an energy blast so big there's no way they could survive. And, and so then they obvi- just walk away. Yeah, they're they fucking not dead. They never double check. Yeah. <laughs> like Zarbon, it's he like exactly doesn't it. ever go check for Vegeta's body. And then yeah. Vegeta just shows up and fucking kills him. Yes. Yeah, I <laughs> cool. remember that. Great. By the way, I just got to the Frieza saga in Dragon Ball uh, Kai. Uh, Z Kai. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. In the interim, the Krenshinabon had molded countless bearers into iron-fisted tyrants and orchestrated military onslaughts to deliver its purpose of destruction in many worlds, including, but not limited to, crossing the trails of the Illithids on a few occasions. Ooh. The Mind Flayers studied this unique item that spurned their mental attacks with a keen interest. Man, those fucking Mind Flayers, they're always up in everyone's shit, they're aren't they? They're always just doing bad stuff. They're just the, they're, they're they're the, the quintessential d d evil footman it's, it's yeah absolutely before before urtu could recover the relic though it was seized by a solar angel named aldemanira urtu was banished to the abyss again by the angel but aldemanira could not destroy the crystal shard it burned his skin terribly and unable to bear it he was forced to hurl the relic across the plains hoping it would never be found which is hilariously short-sighted maneuver for an immortal being of pure good yeah like, th- i'll just throw it yeah through it where through it where exactly through it where it doesn't say just oh, across it, the plains yeah it, well it's about to say the krenshinabon oh, okay. came to rest in the snow of a bowl-shaped dell deep in the northern mountain range on toril known as the spine of the world which is like, bro, you just threw it onto a material plane. Of course <laughs> someone's going to find it. It's going to get fucking picked up. Like, yeah. Even if it's not for a thousand years, it's going to get found. Maybe it like, hit the elemental plane of wind and like got caught in a tornado yeah. and like, got flung it over that way. Or, like, yeah. <laughs> or maybe it was the, um, maybe the Kunshinabon wants to be found, right? I think so, definitely. So definitely. it's like a oh, cool mountain. Yeah, yeah, basically. The, <laughs> just found its way to the material plane. <laughs> there it lay for centuries, sought for its strength by many evil lords, including Urtu, but found by none. The Krenshinabon has had six owners since it arrived in the spine of the world. The first was a devil named Belafet, who, in a feud with his rival, Yixunome, Yixunome, was banished to the material plane. He stumbled upon the shard and formed an army using its powers of suggestion. He erected Krishal Tirith, a great t- crystal tower in the likeness of the Krenshinabon itself, in the town of East Haven until a wandering group of adventurers who killed Yixunome sent him back to Beator. It was pesky adventurers again. Okay, yeah, there they are. <laughs> they're yeah. back. Yeah, they're back. <laughs> Wait, it doesn't say which adventurers? Just no, a group of adventurers? I think I think that one belonged to Adventure Module, so it was oh, okay, whatever, whoever, whoever whatever did campaign. It. Yeah, exactly. The next Comes wielder that. Yeah. Of, of the Krenshinabon was a fumbling wizard in training named Akar Kessel, who stumbled upon the artifact in the mountains of the Spine of the World. Though he could barely cast cantrips himself with the power of the Krenshinabon, he was almost unstoppable. Under the Krenshinabon's influence, Kessel gathered a servitor army of goblin kin trolls and giants. Okay, cool. Let's just go find all the evil bad guys around and yeah, make them my slaves. Exactly. All right. Meanwhile, Urtu noticed a surge of power in the realm, sent to get the artifact's location, and began making his way to seize the artifact. Mm. It's just he's just like in his chamber, and suddenly a, a <laughs> beeping is happening over on the console. He's like, Whoa! Finally! <laughs> <laughs> well, he's told, not finally. He's like thought it was gone, right? Uh, well, no, because he had found it before this, and then Al Dimanera, the angel. Was oh, like, yeah, okay. Back to the so, yeah, he was just like so this waiting is, for radar. This to is beat. time number three now. Okay, he's messing with the Christian Amon. Where was I? Um, Kessel, warned of the fiend's impending arrival by the Krenshinabon, convinced Urtu to serve as his general with the promise that the Tenari Lord could seize the relic after he, a human, died of old age, a relatively short amount of time for the murder Ur- mm-hmm. Urtu, which I think it's hilarious that he went for that. I gotta move now. <laughs> Spurred by the Shard's malignant intelligence, the self-styled tyrant of Icewind Dale then turned his army against the humans of the Ten Towns and the dwarves of Clan Battlehammer in his bid to carve out an empire. Wow. Kessel and his army were eventually defeated by the humans and dwarves of the region with the aid of several adventurers who later <laughs> formed the Company of the Hall, i.e. Drizzt and Friends. Okay, so those adventurers. Yes, now, yeah. we're, now we're in the Salvatore books for sure now. Um... The Krenshinabon was buried under half the snow of Kelvin's cairn, entombed with the late, unlamented Kessel by an avalanche of its own creation. Okay. Next up, about ten-ish years later, Stumpet Raking Claw, 
a female dwarf cleric in the employ of Clan Battlehammer, came across the Crenshinabon while climbing Kelvin's cairn. As her moral code made it too difficult for the artifact to insinuate itself into her mind, the shard quickly escaped her by calling to Urtu. Hey, Urtu. <laughs> I, I, I know help, we haven't, bro. it hasn't worked out in the past, but I, I really think we should give this a shot. <laughs> no, Urtu's down. Urtu's down super bad. Down. Urtu's like, yes, finally. <laughs> Urtu finally gotten what he had wanted and was the next wielder of the shard. Good for you, Urtu. <laughs> yeah, because the shard doesn't know what's going to happen if it's like left to the devices of somebody too good, right? Like it'll probably get destroyed. Yeah, it can't, it just it can't sink its claws and then make it do what it wants. Yeah, but why not? I was thinking like, what's not? What's the point of calling out to Urtu as a contingent of that? You know, why not just hang out for a while and see what happens? Well. See, I haven't read the book, so I don't know how long it hung out with Stump It Raking Claw. Yeah, I'm thinking there must be some, something happens to make it want to call out to... Yeah. It probably tried a few times and it just wasn't getting through. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't like her. You fuck it, let's take care of her. So what, she just like Urtu's has to deal a, with Urtu now? I, get, I yeah. don't read the book, but all I know is Urtu's a booty call, but he don't give a fuck. <laughs> no, he's waiting. <laughs> he's next to his phone. <laughs> Unfortunately for him... <clears throat> Drizzed, with the help of his companion Wolfgar, once again managed to defeat and banish him to the abyss. Or two can't catch <laughs> he a break. He showed bro. up and got defeated by the hero. Oh, That's God. great. He got stabbed and bit by a jaguar or something, right? That's what Drizzt does. Drizzt. I, I'm not going to comment on I'm that. pretty sure he stabs people twice. Yes, definitely twice. And then twice. his jaguar bites them, and then they die. That, that needs that's yeah. pretty much what happens right yeah pretty much okay okay so the next part is going to involve a lot of named characters from the drizz series that i know you do not know oh well, is that no caddy brie i know that one that one's not in this one sorry Fuck. And okay I, i'm out yeah. <laughs> and that i honestly barely know but these characters are super important to the Forgotten Realms zeitgeist and history and have huge followings across the fandom we're going to do our best to parse through the events that fall out I apologize for our accidental irreverence ahead of time. Yeah, I think, like, just to be clear, like, I'm not knocking anybody for liking this, no. this series of books. I, I, will, I would read them if I had time. Like, someday maybe yeah. I'll be a fan. I should probably should at some point. I, I will say that the Drizzt fans are extremely passionate, and they care about how the names are pronounced. And we're going to do our best. Yeah. So here we go. So later that year... <laughs> A drow by the name of Yarlaxle, who is a legend, who is as legendary as the Mandrist himself, with a crazy amount of exploits and abilities and magic items. He's really famous for having a lot of magic items. And if I were to reduce him to a mere metaphor metaphorical analog with my extremely limited knowledge, I would say he is the Catwoman to Drizzt's Batman, just without the sexual tension. Okay, that's that's or, fine. Or, or maybe there's a ton of sexual tension. I don't know. I, I, I do know Jarlaxle comes up more often than probably we realize. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Anyways, Yarlaxle tricks Drizzt into giving the shard to him by hiring a doppelganger, disguising him as a human cleric and friend, Catterly. Is it Bonaduce? Bonaduce? Bonaduce. Bonadu I like Bonaduce. That's funny. <laughs> I think it's Bonaduce. I think it's Bonaduce. Let me know in the comments. That sounds fucking radical. Mm -hmm. Yarlaxle <laughs> then used the Crinchinabon to carve himself a place in the city of Kalimport. Oh, here we go. His lieutenant. Rye guy. Rye it has guy. to be Rye guy, right? That's Rye guy? It says Rye guy. It's, that's Rye guy, right? <laughs> you're you're going to fucking find out, my dude. His lieutenant Rye guy. Someone's going to be mad as shit at you. It's either Rye guy or it's Ray guy. And either way, it's not a good name. Ray Gui. <laughs> we, if we say them all, they can't get mad. <laughs> but anyways, Rye guy believed he could control the shard better than his leader and tried to take it by force. This was undoubtedly due to the shard's corrupting manipulation, but this was thwarted by Yarlaxle's companion, Artemis and Treary, okay. who, again, I have very limited knowledge of, but he is or was like Driz's greatest rival. He's like a super assassin. Oh, sick. Uh, I'm sure there's people reeing at me with every additional <laughs> word I say. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying. So Artemis has, at this point, managed to ignore the crystal shard's manipulative magic through sheer willpower. And Treary rescues Yarlaxle from his two lieutenants, um, oh God! Another. Oh yeah, Kimuriel, Kim Kimuriel Obludra, and Rai Guy, and Rai Guy. <laughs> Rai Guy's fun to say. I love Rai Guy. Keep hitting Rai Guy, and convinces him to come along with him to take the shard to the real Catterly and find from him a way to destroy the dangerous artifact. Mm. I do want to say that Rai Guy does eventually succeed in capturing the shard, though his possession of it. Is short lived. Dang, did it call her too again? <laughs> <laughs> You'll see. Eventually, the Grinchinabon is eventually destroyed by the red dragon Hephaestus. And it was at this point of my research where I realized 
that Ari Salvatore has a thing for grabbing ancient Greek god names and slapping them on his characters. Cool. I mean, it's cool. That's I've fun. done it before. Yeah. Um, just we have Artemis and Trieri, and now we have Hephaestus the dragon. Oh, you literally wrote, "Hey man, it's cool." <laughs> I did. Hey man, it's cool. I've done it too. I did it. So Hephaestus destroys, quote unquote, destroys the crystal shard when Yarlaxle tricks him into breathing fire on it, and it's wielder Rygai. Sorry, Rygai. Oh no. <laughs> Whilst it was inside of a globe of magical darkness, depowered by being closed off from the sun, the Crenshinamon finally was theoretically eliminated. Hey, more like Fry Guy. Am I right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> or was it destroyed? Uh, <laughs> For however, powerful necromantic energy still lingered around the shard. Oh, it had a it's got seven fucking uh It's got seven lives, bro. Yeah, There's what's seven the, liches in it. Um yeah. what's the thing? The it's got seven phylacteries you have to destroy to destroy know, right? the crystal Seriously. shard. Okay. So when the spell plague, i.e. fourth edition D, began to affect Hephaestus's lair, it turned the dragon into a Draco Lich and the nearby corpse of an Illithid. I don't know how he got there. I didn't read the book. <laughs> Just ran. Yahar Skrik. <laughs> he walked in there because of the tunnels or whatever, like in the underdark. Well, we do know the Illithids did have an interest in the Crenshinamon. So this is the the front spy. So maybe this dude showed up because he had heard rumors. Yeah, it's like, I, like maybe say? here. I'm sure go someone back. who's read the book can tell us. Yeah, but he got torched immediately on entering this dragon lair. Yeah, well, he his corpse he got turned into a ghost who compelled Hephaestus to smash the shard into his forehead before <laughs> fusing itself and the shard with the remains of Hephaestus' body. The three combined became a sentient conduit between the realm of the living and that of the dead and were labeled the Ghost King. <laughs> it's like do it like a beer can bro come on i want to see you smash that shit do it oh i'm getting sucked in <laughs> the ghost of, <laughs> the ghost of this elephant is seth rogan absolutely <laughs> after a great battle the ghost king fled to the shadow fell i'm i'm really like we're glossing over stuff yeah yeah but i'm doing my best here caterly chased him into that plane caterly's a human cleric in case you need a reminder okay taking over the mantle of Ghost King, as Hephaestus retreated from Catterley's divine light. Now, my question here is, is, is he, does he take over the mantle because he absorbs the shards of the Crenshinamon? I guess. I guess. Walking between the material plane and the shadow fell, Catterley was considered to be of both worlds and of neither. He condemned himself to walk this ward eternally to prevent Hephaestus terrorizing the material plane. If ever the Draco Lich decided to return. Damn, Okay. <laughs> So before we get into the powers of the Crenshinamon. Yeah, so we're just detailing, like, the lore of the item, like, yeah. without having to read like, yeah, it, several novels. Exactly. This is sort of a this cliff was, I just went over five books. That was yeah. five novels. Okay. No disrespect to them. To yeah. Them, like, but we're just not going to take the time to detail all that stuff, Gosh. like, in its proper... I'd have to find an expert and, like, take notes and ask questions, and it would have to be a whole thing. Yeah, that's uh, just, that's, that's not the, the for me the important part of this episode is is the Crescentamon itself, not like its actual history. I just wanted to give you the cliff notes on it. Right, like it, th this is the involvement, and to not mention it would also be, I feel like, yeah, it'd be weird. A It'd be weird on, to not, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I got just, it. yeah. So, so even though we're not experts on it, this is kind of the cliff notes of what this thing has been exactly. through. This is how Ari Salvatore used it to basically exactly, like yeah. trade a bunch of hands and be, uh, you know, like you said, the MacGuffin of, yes, you know, Across a cataclysmic event because exactly. getting it means like doom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So before we get into the powers of Grinchinamon, I wanted to share an interesting tidbit. The events of the Crystal Shard and all those novels I just talked about can still be felt in 5th edition via the Rime of the Frost Maiden Adventure, which takes place in Icewind Dale where a lot of the Crystal Shard stuff went down. Right. <coughs> <coughs> Here is an excerpt from uh, Rime of the Frost Maiden. Do you want to read it? You should read it. Yeah, I was just going to start. I wasn't even going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> More than a hundred years prior to this adventure, a wizard named Akar Kessel found an artifact suffused with demonic magic called the Cinnabon, a Krishinabon, <laughs> better known as the Crystal Shard, and used it to erect a great black tower in Icewind Dale. I heard people love the Icewind Dale adventure. I'd be very interested in playing I've heard it. good things about it. Yeah, it's one of the few adventures that from Watsi that people are like, mm. Yeah, yeah. The, the minis from it are good. I guess it's because it's based on a really good story written by R.A. Salvatore. It it's would like track. Built on all that. It would track. Uh, and um, when this tower was destroyed, the magic used to create it fused with the surrounding ice to form what is known as Shardolin. Yeah, you got it. Okay. A non-magical crystalline substance as strong as metal, though considerably easier to work with than steel. In the years since, more deposits of Shardolin have been found across Icewind Dale. 
Like the Crystal Shard, these deposits tend to be suffused with demonic magic. Prolonged contact with Shardlin that has become suffused with demonic magic can warp a creature's mind, causing madness that usually fades away once the contact is broken. Uh, I don't know if it's spoilers for Arswin... Icewind Dale adventure, but just in case, like this is at the very, this is like page two of the introduction. Yeah, the adventure, so and I know that there's a dragon in the adventure with the I same name. That. Yeah, well, there's, it's like, it can't, it can't be spoilers if there's like a fucking like you can go buy the figure of it, right? Yeah, that's the only reason I know about it. Yeah, um, because I haven't cracked. The adventure module. It's yeah. not really my thing, but yeah. this one I'd be interested. So Shardolin is cold to the touch and readily accepts magical enchantment, making it an ideal substance for wands, staves, and other magic items. It, uh, a Shardolin object suffused with the magic of the upper planes is considered a consecrated object, while a Shardolin object suffused with the magic of the lower planes is considered a desecrated object. Both can be identified as such using a detect evil and good spell or similar magic. Yeah, it seems like, you know, the way the Krishinamon um, absorbs sunlight and absorbs energy, it seems like these pieces of Shardolin, these pieces of it that have lost that, um, can accept other forms of energy. Oh, cool. Positive okay. and negative, which is pretty cool. I like, uh, like, the special materials that emerge from, like, the D&D-verse. Yeah. You know, what's the yeah. metal one? Adamantine? Yeah, adamantine's like the famous one, Mithril, which is of course originally yeah. Lord of the Rings. And those those came first in mm -hmm. those iterations of fantasy, and then there was Wolverine. And that's true. You know, one I don't see uh, as much as I I feel like I should because it, I think it comes from ancient Greek mythology. But it's Orichalcum. I like Orichalcum. Oh yeah, I think it's a cool one. I like what in Yu Gi Oh, it's the seal of Orichalcos. I don't even remember that. Like they, you know, it's like what Salvatore is doing by taking an old Greek god's name and slapping it onto a character. They want something right. that sound that has that sound. Yeah, right? yeah it has certain connotations. Like yeah. in American movies, your bad guys or like maybe your good guy even has like a British accent because it sounds alien. Right. In a yeah, way, yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah. foreign. In yeah, a way, absolutely. like that's the that's what they're. It's not my <clears throat> trick. It's what they're doing. Right. Indeed. You know, but <laughs> it's interesting. Let's take a short rest. Okay. It's the grand adventures of alien and beard. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. How are you doing, Ilian? You doing all right? You keeping up, buddy? My robes and beard are weighing me down, but I'll be all right. It's a mighty beard. Now it is full of water and creating much drag. Uh, Ilian, swim behind me. I'll create a wake for you to move within. Yes, okay. Uh, let me maneuver over there. I, I must say, Ben, for a man in full plate armor, you're swimming quite impressively. I, I'm very... Well, I'm very impressed. Oh, thank you. I, I, I'm looking back, and I would say bewildered is more of the emotion on your face. Don't worry, I'm used to it. Now, uh, I will tell you of my friend Dan. He was a paladin, and he could swim like no other. His shoulders were so strong, and he taught me uh, this. It's called a breaststroke. You just kind of kick your legs a little bit. You, you see, you start with your hands out in your chest. I, so you realize I'm behind you. I can't see what you're doing. Uh, you kind of you can see my wingspan. So look uh, like I'm true. gonna uh, here. I'll swim next to you for a little. That's bit. That's rather <laughs> dark <laughs> down here. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Start with your hands and your chest, and move okay, outward like and forward, and then you're going to scoop the water. You uh, scoop it and push it behind you. My eight just, strength. You know, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll take your. I'll take I, your staff. I, negative one modifier. Uh, you know what? You can just grab onto me. It's fine. Yes, yeah, this seems much more prudent. Yes, sir. Swimming. Anyway, Dan was quite the man. He he got vaporized. It's a long story, um, but but yeah, I have a good memory with him. Right before he died, he brought me the warmest, softest cinnamon bun I'd ever seen, and I ate it, and it was delicious. I've actually painted it lakeside, and you know what? I I, I figure when we get to the end of this body of water, if it is a lake, maybe I'll do a quick one. My acrylics are in a waterproof case. You can never be too careful. You're making me hungry, Ben. Hey, you want me to keep swimming? Yeah, yes, please. Swimming keep towards swimming. the light oh, over there. Oh, look at that. There's a light over yeah. there, Ben. Yeah, that's kind yes. of where I was heading Head for. Head straight that way, for it is likely the light of an artifact of magical power, the likes of which you and I could only ever imagine. That can only the, be one thing. Yes, the pendant of plenteous patrons. Uh, tell me again why we need it so badly. Because it will make our dreams come true, Bian. Uh, yes. I love Powered my dreams. by the souls of a thousand generous benefactors, the pendant shall provide us the funds we need to pursue 
the hobbies of our dreams and also my magic and the wonders the likes of which you could only imagine. I can't wait to one day see your magic, Gillian. Yes. It sounds fantastical. It will blow your mind. I would, I would like it to keep it inside of my skull, but that's fine. Onward! We've returned. Indeed we have. We're fucking back. Indeed we are. I broke a chain that I had going. I like skipped saying that. <gasps> the fucking back part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the important part. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> yeah, it was like two episodes ago or something. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. end of an era. We're back, though. <laughs> We're back, though. Um, <clears throat> what are we doing? Are we talking about uh, helping Alien and Beeren? Yeah, if you guys want to help Alien and Beeren on their quest to find the Pendant of Plenty's patrons, check out the Dungeon Cast on uh, Patreon. Yeah, if you're confused on what you just heard and what's going on, you can go back to episode 350 where the adventures of Ilion and Beeren begin. Indeed. Um, and then I think we're going to, every 10 episodes, we're going to do like a smash and put them all on Patreon as like one big audio clip. So you can listen to what would probably be like I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes of Alien and Beer and Adventures right off the bat. So Absolutely. it's like episode one as they get to whatever happens in the first 10 episodes. Indeed. So, um, I plan on like doing a like more like major central story thing for Alien and Beer in every 10 episodes or so. Um, Cause you know, they just sometimes dick around with the monsters that we're talking about. Indeed. And it's fun, but they are working towards a goal, which is um, finding the pendant of plenteous patrons, which is representative of the power that Patreon represents for us. So, indeed, um, so check out uh, patreoncom slash guest if you want to assist them on e their venture. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's out of the way. Now what? Well, now it's time to go over the powers of the cringe cinema. Okay. You want me to do it? I do. I do. Uh, the question is, what can this thing do? And let us start with the only st style block this artifact ever got from Second Edition Volu's Guide. To all things magical. Volo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Volo is in BG3, by the way. Oh, that's cool. I ran into him. I feel like he should be in most, like, Forgotten Realm stuff. Like, he should I guess be so. around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Fizban. Well, he's a uh, Dragonlance. Uh, is he not? A he's Forgotten Dragonlance. Realm? He's Dragonlance. Oh, he's different? It's, yeah. They don't insert Fizban's him into that from stuff? Dragonlance, no. Oh. So they need to make different games to have Fizban around? I, if they make a Dragonlance game, I'm here for it. <laughs> the Kren the Shinnabon is an enigma. Edward Nigma, uh, a force of darkest evil that draws in strength from that which good is, alike. Is the Crin Shinnabon the Riddler to Dritz's Batman? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, let's keep comparing Dritz to, to Batman. That's not bad. That's not a bad yeah, analogy, I, agree. I don't think. Uh, uh, a force of darkest evil that draws its strength from that which good aligned beings find most precious, the light of day. For every hour of daylight, the crystal shard or the crystal tirith, if it contains the artifact, is directly exposed to the light of the sun. The Kren Shinnabon absorbs 12 power levels of energy. Uh, and that'll show up on your scouter if it you will. hit it. It's yeah. over 12. It's 12. It's at 12. The artifact can store a maximum of 144 power levels at any one time. Can I? Sorry. I yeah, go ahead. You. I got to pause you. Um, the greatest crime that Dragon Ball Z Kai has done <laughs> is by correcting Vegeta from 9,000 to 8,000. And it's just, I'm so disappointed. I should have uh, just left it. His, what does the scouter say about his power level, Vegeta? It's 1,009. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go on. It was upside down, Nappa. His power <laughs> level was over nine thousand. Okay. Anyway, I had to close the loop, or it didn't. It won't work out for me. Um, the artifact can store one hundred forty-four power levels at any one time, and additional exposure to the sun has no effect after that. Every two hours, the Krinshinabon slowly loses two power levels. The energy simply dissipates. The relic burns power uh, to create spell effects at its bearer's will, at cost of one power level per uh, of a spell effect. Although spell effects can be maintained at night, no new spell effects may be created by the relic while the sun is completely below the horizon. When spells are cast, the ambient light of the sun diminishes as the relic actually steals its radiance. I'm pretty sure there was a Game Boy game that had like a um, like solar like battery in it, and it was about fighting vampires. No and shit. you had to like go outside to get 
your sunlight. your sunlight powers recharge. That's interesting. Yeah. So if you were playing at night, like you're fucked. Yeah, you, you basically had to power through. To and the morning. people were buying like you can buy a UV light for like a reptile or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. People were buying UV lights so they could play the game at night what? and charge their shit without going That's outside. That's insane. I've never heard of this. Yeah, Nintendo's always trying to get people to go outside because they always were critiqued for like locking kids in doors to use their system. Is that a thing? Yeah, it's yeah. been like a big critique. So like. Pokemon Go is a result of like people, you it's know, one of the the relics of link that. cables. Yeah. Go yeah. to the park so you yeah. can be outside with your handheld and like get sunshine yeah. while you play. The Wii video games. in general, yeah. yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah, they they've always kind of like taken that critique and tried to bring it around. Interesting. So the Krenshinabon is sentient. <laughs> With an effective intelligence of 19, wisdom of 18, a charisma of 18, it is 100% magic resistant and immune to psionics and physical attacks. The relic prefers weak, indecisive bearers as they are easier to dominate. It desires to conquer and command and has an insatiable hunger for absolute power. It needs a golem. The Krenshinabon burns any creature of good alignment who physically touches it with bare skin for 1d10 points of damage per round. Even while wearing leather or metal gauntlets, the good aligned bear suffers 1d6 points of damage per round. The ultimate preservation of light... Perversion. Oh, uh, perversion. I see it. You're right. <laughs> the ultimate perversion of light, Krenshinabon, radiates warmth with an ambient temperature of approximately 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's like San Diego all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like great. It means... I could, use, I could definitely use a Krenshinamon in my house. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. It provides the benefit of... I, I, I want, in the wintertime in Buffalo, they want the Krenshinamon. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, yeah. It provides the benefits of a ring of warmth to anyone holding it in direct Ooh, contact with that his or her like. skin. That's too hot. No, thank you. Hot damn. Uh, <laughs> the bearer of the Crystal Shard can create and maintain magical towers known as Krishal Tirith at the cost of 24 power levels per day. The tower is created from a duplicate of the crystal shard that splits off from the actual artifact and expands into a gigantic edifice With the bear, uh, when the bear invokes it with the command Ibsum Dal Abdur. These incredible fortresses can serve as a shelter and home for those who dare to wield the artifact. Each crystal Tirith can teleport without error itself and all items and beings within it at a cost of 12, 12 power levels at the will of the bearer of the crystal shard who also chooses the destination. I told you, two E stat blocks are very wordy. Yeah, it's you got to like un- really understand the entire... Yeah. items like encompassing powers mm-hmm. um and you know, maybe your adventurers want to get a uv light for their like you know vampire game wherever they're hanging out That's just so they can you would get this yeah well you, you need to charge up your crystal <laughs> so you can make <laughs> towers and teleport at will because it's a whole day of power like yeah. you go yeah. and you get your 12 bars or whatever right is that yeah yeah it's well you can get 12 bars per day and it caps at 144 Wait, no, that's not, no that's not right you can get way more i think Hold on, I'm going back to the top, because I believe it's per hour. That's per hour. Oh, so you can just leave it outside yeah, for a while. One, 12 hours of sunlight, it's fully charged. Gotcha. Okay, so pretty much one whole day of charge, you get mm-hmm. all the usages. Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. I thought it was like, you need 12 days to go by to like get a full charge or whatever. No, no, okay. you just need one one day. Okay, that's good. That's much better than I thought. Um, And then I read that paragraph, right? Or wait, did I not? Each incarnation of the Crystal Tirith has four palatial square-walled floors constructed of smooth, strong crystals. The first is entered via a dark hallway and serves as the main chamber of the tower and guard post. Stairs lead up from the back of the chamber to a small platform. A secret door hides a second stair uh, that cont- continues up to the second floor, a comfortably adorned sleeping chamber. I just got to say, it's really cool. This artifact literally comes with a pre-built dungeon. It is cool. Um that's kind of reminds me of those spells like um, Magic Mansion or whatever. Yeah. You know, like yeah. That kind of stuff. But way bigger. Way bigger. Okay. A stair uh, leads to a landing opening onto the third floor of the tower. This room known as the Hall of Scrying is filled with numerous magical scrying devices, including dozens of mirrors and a grand crystal throne and a Nokia Motorola. <laughs> Can't believe you wrote that. Yeah, I mean, they last for thousands of years. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Yeah, and if you really need to, you can fucking club like a cheetah over the head to stop it from eating you. <laughs> yep. Gotta have one. <laughs> a small ladder leads to the fourth floor, which houses the crystal shard and a single mirror. Uh, the relic levitates in the center of this small chamber, powering Crystal Tirith and any other spell effects employed by the bearer. 
uh, the crystal, t- crystal Tirith and its occupants are invulnerable to all forms of external magical, psionic, or physical attack. No magical or psionic effect cast within Crystal Tirith can affect the bearer of Krenshinabon unless they so desire. All spell effects cast at the tower are reflected back at the caster. Only a creature not native to the plane on which Crystal Tirith is currently located or those allowed by the bearer of the Krenshinabon or by the artifact itself can locate the entrance to the tower. An invisible door opening onto the first floor of the tower, the bearer of the crystal of the crystal shard can destroy any crystal tirith at will. The tower then collapses into a mound of black stonework that slowly disintegrates into dust. This also occurs uh, precipitously if the artifact runs out of power levels. Anyone trapped in a tower during its destruction is instantly crushed to death. <laughs> Damn it! I know, right? Huh. Rocks really did fall. Yeah, it's <laughs> isn't it sound like uh, kind of sounds like you're reading the like um like the terms of service on yes, some bullshit. Yes, that's how these stat blocks used to be, man. <laughs> you are. They are the terms of service. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly do. what's going on. <laughs> uh, both Crystal Tirith and the Crystal Shard can pulse with a burst of blinding light that temporarily blinds any sighted creature who observes the pulse for one d6 rounds. This ability does not cost any power levels. The Crystal Shard also, without draining power levels, functions as a maximum strength ring of telekinesis that's fucking cool mm-hmm. uh Krenshinabon enables its owner to cast numerous spell effects as an 18th level wizard spell effects issue from the bearer if crystal tirith <laughs> is not close by but otherwise issue from the tower itself all spell effects except for those of the enchantment charm school appear as a ray of blindingly bright light so no wonder it's like you get corrupt. You're like living inside of it, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The crystal shard can act as a powerful instrument of destruction. Its bearer can cast any offensive wizard spell from the school of invocation or evocation at a cost of one power level per spell level. All such spells have unlimited range, but are effectively limited by the horizon. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. It's a death ray tower. You just yeah, you can fucking blast the moon. It's a, it's a death star. <laughs> um, the relic can also serve as a means of manipulation. Its bearer can cast any enchantment or charm spell at a cost of one power level per spell spell level. In addition, the crystal shard serves as a rod of rulership for its bearer without needing charges. Excuse me. It's a death star that can brainwash you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, I don't even want to make him go get us Cinnabons. <laughs> They're my favorite. <laughs> my father named me after Cinnabons. <laughs> my seven fathers. My seven fathers. <laughs> they were eating cin- uh, a table full of Cinnabons exploded. That's when how they, they actually died. Yeah, there's actually Cinnabons inside of me. I overheated the Cinnabon. Oh! <laughs> there was a guy named Chris, and he's my true dad, I feel like, of the seven. And then a bunch of Cinnabons. That's how I was made. Yep. <laughs> the Krenshinabon can act as a powerful tool for scrying. The magical mirrors located on the fourth floor of Crystal Tirith function as crystal balls. The bearer of the crystal shard can cast any wizard spell from the schools of lesser or greater divination or employ the rod of rulership functions through the mirrors at a cost of one power level per spell level. If a mirror is removed from Crystal Tirith, it can function as a two-way communication device between the bearer of the crystal shard in the mirror room of Crystal Sh- Crystal Tirith and anyone who stands in front of the remote mirror. Okay, so I got a question. Do you think the Krenshinabon got named before Cinnabon was ever a thing? And that would make like, a lot of sense, right? What? How would that make sense? Well, it's just like, why would you name something Crin Cinnabon when it so obviously sounds like Cinnabon, right? Oh, you mean like practically as things were written in the real yeah, world? Yeah, like and not yeah, in, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, in the yeah. verse? Yeah. It's like, what yeah. are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> it's not real, Will. Yeah, they were like, <laughs> no, but yeah, in the real, somebody yeah. was playing D&D and was like, you know what? I really love Driss Ward and I really love cinnamon rolls. <laughs> What can I do here? What can I do here? <laughs> uh, it's founded in 1985, so I don't think so. Cinnabon. Cinnabon was founded in 1985. They were eating Cinnabons, bro. <laughs> they were definitely eating Cinnabons. Go ahead. Salvatore's Sorry. doing all kinds of stuff. All right, go ahead. <laughs> if he's ever on again, we have to ask him that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. I need to know. Um or was I simply standing in front of the mirror alerts a bearer of the crystal shard that communication is requested by stepping through it. T- so it's like um um, Nokia's like press to talk. What were those things called? Boop. I thought I thought it was push to talk. No, no, they. Oh, I swear they had a name when we were kids. I can't remember. Go ahead, do you think? Uh, yeah, okay. We're showing our. Age. <laughs> 
fuck? Where was I? Okay. Uh, <laughs> by stepping through a tower mirror, uh, it is possible for the owner to travel to a remote mirror. That's cool. Uh, the shard also facilitates magical transportation of a more conventional sort. Its bearer can cast any wizard translocational spell of 8th level or less, including dimension door teleport, teleport without error, and gateway at a cost of one power level per spell level. Uh, initially, the Krenshinabon communicates with its bearer via subconscious suggestions in a fashion similar to a 5th level wizard spell dream, or its reverse nightmare. After 1d4 plus 1 years of molding its owner's personality and goals, Krenshinabon can communicate silently to its owner while she or he is awake. So it just imprints on you slowly for a while. It does. That's toxic. I'm um, sorry to interrupt again, but I found it. Um, I was mixing up Nokia with Nextel. Nextel had those That's from the was. chirps. Chirps. That's what they were called. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a time to be alive. Indeed. From 2000 to 2005. Showing our age. Indeed. Um, <laughs> remember when the keyboards used to like flip around on the fucking, what were those? Sidekicks. Oh, sidekicks. Yeah, bro. yeah I had a sidekick. It was oh, cool. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Although the relic cannot force its bear to sleep, it can suge cast suggestion <gasps> on its bear as an 18th level wizard at will. Uh, these spell effects can affect the bearer of the crystal shard regardless of any normal immunities. While the bearer is awake, they have a normal saving throw versus spell. Uh, but while asleep, their saving throw suffers a minus six penalty. Krenshinabon's suggestions always advance its plans to fo uh, ferment chaos and evil and to extend its dominion over a larger and larger area. Effectively, Krenshinabon can force its bearer to do anything it wishes through repeated use of suggestion spells. Finally, Krenshinabon chooses its bearer and cannot be co uh, coerced to perform any task. Uh, it can reject and withhold its powers from a bearer if it decides to. So after a few years, it's going to just treat whoever's in its employ as its puppet. Right, exactly. Through magic. <clears throat> Indeed. Um, if it needs to, I guess. But the person just is cool with it, it sounds like, or doesn't know. Slowly notice. becomes cool with it, if, yeah. if, if anything, yeah. Yeah, and that's... This is probably why it avoids uh, creatures like Urtu the Balor, because it's so difficult to manipulate. Right, the charisma suggestion level just is will not, Yeah, suggestion just will not work on the Balor. Like, you know, it's like, you actually have to work as a team. You yeah. can't just tell them what to do. That's right? a bummer for a Balor. Yeah, exactly. And it's a bummer for the Krenshinamon because it won't be able to. Right. Um, but yeah, sorry, go ahead. That's that's everything. That's all we got. So what do you think of the Krenshinamon? Let's start there. What do you think of this thing? I mean, it's over. it seems overly complicated to use, which is why you said at the beginning, like, this isn't something you just, like, hand out. Yeah, it, it, like, in my opinion, it doesn't even need a stat block. Yeah, because it, it's basically like, oh, there's a big crystal tower over there. Like, where exactly. do you think everybody's at? Right, yeah. exactly. And I was going to say, you know, it kind of reminds me of uh, the the kind of weird fantasy that you see in Dungeon Crawl Classics where it's like, hey, this bizarre green crystal tower showed up in the middle of the land. And, like, now, like, weird crystal monsters come out at night and, like, you know, ravage and demand tribute. And, like, what are we going to do? We got to go in there and kill the dark wizard Lazar who's in charge of the whole thing. You know, just <laughs> yeah. a real classic campy ass shit which i think is fun and cool yeah now we um, march on this tower yeah exactly it's like you got your group together you're going in you yeah know and I mean? your strongest paladin rides in on horseback and he gets fucking laser beamed from across yeah the field. you're like oh <laughs> shit oh no <laughs> dan no dan <laughs> and his horse are fucking <laughs> vaporized <laughs> not paladin <laughs> like yeah paladin he, paladin was riding over the horizon and just as the crystal shard uh, came into viewpoint. He got fucking <laughs> obliterated. Poor Paladin. We should have run in there at we night, my boy. Knew the Paladin, no. <laughs> and that's how we would use the cringe. <laughs> he had all his smites. <laughs> what are we gonna do? All his spell slots. Now what? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You have to. You go on a holy conquest to um, with Paladin to stop whoever's the, doing the cringe. Yeah, one. fucking weird wizard golem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's All a right. cool adventure. I think we're ready for a long rest. Yeah. <laughs> we got to end on Paladin. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the long rest. You can hang out in my crystal tower anytime and eat Cinnabons with me. Come Sounds and nice. Sit around the mirror. We'll talk to our granddad. He's ready to know about your adventures and how you smote Paladin from across the land. <laughs>
what are we talking about again? <laughs> Grandpa, I told you I can fire beams from the crystal tower we're sitting in. It's like, why are you in the mirror, child? <laughs> anyway, you can check us out on Soch. Do yeah, it. we got Instagram. We're on Twitter slash X. We're on Mastodon. We're on Discord. Uh, all the links are in the description. Discord's, if you want to talk to us, Discord's probably the place to do it. Mm -hmm. We hang out there sometimes, and we talk to fans, and people ask us questions, and they interact with us. It's fun. Yeah, um, and I was, uh, I'm was i at Sound Good Inc. on Instagram. Uh, thanks for all the love. I posted a, a, a video of my dragon turtle that I'll show Will after this because no, I'm yes. proud of it. And uh, you guys seem to enjoy it somewhat. Um, uh, people seem to be trickling in from the show. It's just me living my life on there. It's not like anything crazy or D&D &D related necessarily, although maybe it will be. Like it always could do that. Sometimes I post pictures on my story of my me at the table with my friends like playing games I do that on the week every other week ish um so yeah but it's cool just to interact with you guys you guys can reach out to me on there like some people send me memes every once in a while which i enjoy um shout out to nick Woyson, who I, is in the discord and i think maybe a patron cool probably or was at one point but it's all appreciated um and a few others that that find me on there. My account's private. the 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 image is a goat, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, why? Okay, tell me. <laughs> it's because it was representative of me trying to get the new job. Like the oh, it's you're the calling goat, yourself goat. a goat. It was the goat, and I was just like, I'm really happy when I got a new. <laughs> I got a new job. I've been wondering, and yes, congratulations. I'm gonna change it back job. to a picture of me soon. Okay, that's for sure. Like I don't know. It was I do like really random big inside job inside jokes at my. Other, my old job you don't say and that was just it's like almost like it's a part of your personality yeah it's like very very layered stuff that people probably don't get when i post it so sorry <laughs> uh but thanks for everybody who went on there and like looked at it anyway so that's was, that's was cool I'll, I'll change it back to a picture I of myself like this goat yeah <laughs> I, ai generated it oh no shit yeah oh, it was wow. pretty cool that's for sure um <laughs> skype has bing bing will like you yeah, can ask bing I've to heard. do stuff I with it, <clears> anyway heard. Um, well, like the ethics of AI are questionable for when you're like making money, but when you're just having fun, I when guess you're just it's making just for fun to hype yourself up, just hyping myself up with goats. Do. Cause there was, okay. There was this, I'll Here just explain go. it. There was this video <laughs> I saw on the gram. It got taken down cause it had a curse word in it, but it was this guy like, you want to hear me on Instagram? You can't curse. I, I, some things get taken down because okay. of suspect okay. content. I don't know. Okay. Um, the the ver is this guy was like you want to hear my goat call and they were like yeah they were on a hiking trail and there's goats up on this mountain he's like oh fucking come here goat <laughs> <laughs> and I was like yeah come here goat new job okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know it got out of hey, hand man. I get really bored it when worked. I'm like you in an got office the job. chair yeah I did <laughs> it's cool don't question it I'm not questioning it um thanks old job and new job <laughs> anyway. Uh, that, that's a fun, a fun detail, but my Instagram, you can find it. Sound good ink. Uh, come follow me. It's on private, but I'll accept you. Um, as long as you're not a sex bot. What else do we want to talk about? Um, we're still giving away a copy of Baldur's Gate. Although by the time you're hearing this, the, the contest might be over. There's only 500 subscribers till we hit our mark at 50 K. Yeah. Should we just like drop it? Should we just give it away already? Cause we're going to hit the mark like, and Baldur's Gate is out. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. We could talk about it off the camera. Okay, I, I okay. like the celebration. I want to get the it's full like Mr. Girl. Here's Baldur's Gate. Like, yeah. anyway, um, uh, we thought there was a chance that this would happen that would miss time a little bit. Also, it would it would cheat out the 500 people that closed the gap because they wouldn't be part of it, you know? That's true, and we have yeah. been saying. So I guess we have to wait. I feel a little bad that it's happening, like, after the release, but, like, yeah. it is what it is. You could still, like, I feel like people that went to go get the game, like, got it yeah but, yeah that's probably, um but if you're still it. if you're still waiting on it like well yeah hey, man uh <laughs> it's 70 bucks so like i don't blame anybody for who's, who's waiting it's a great game yeah. i'm thoroughly enjoying it but if you're trying to save the that money in that wallet like hey join the there's contest. a chance Never there's know. a chance yeah so thanks to everybody if if the contest is over you'll have heard about it on social media before the show because of the nature of the way we record the show is uh you know ahead of time ahead of time uh okay so uh, you write book good? <laughs> yeah. Good book? I'm working on a book. It's called Star Seeker's Guide to Dragon Star. It's a fifth edition space opera slash science fantasy adventure uh, based off of our live play podcast, Super Quest Saga. 
It's going to have 12 subclasses, 11 new species plus a species builder. Uh, for those who don't know, species are races in this sci-fi world. Um, it's going to have over 100 alien monsters. It's going to have space travel rules and ship combat. It's going to have just a plethora, a plethora of science fiction slash fantasy content. Um, and if you're interested in helping us write this book and helping support us, or if you're just interested in the product itself because it sounds cool, go to dragonstar.com, check the link in the description, and pre-order your book today. Hell yeah. Um, here's that video. <laughs> She's eating a strawberry. We're great at advertising things. Oh, she's adorable. Yeah. She's enjoying that sunlight. Oh, yeah. she's She finished eating, and now she's, like, on her way back to her burrow. Nice uh, ambient music, man. Uh, yeah, this was... Um, a chill hop. I love it. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the app suggested I make that reel with that song, and I was like, this is great. Yeah, it works. I just hit I a couple it. buttons. Yeah, I was like, oh, fantastic. it did a pretty good job, because I took those videos as my story. I didn't yeah, actually yeah. Make, make that reel. Oh, yeah, gotcha. gotcha yeah, gotcha. so it made it for me. Yeah, you can yeah. go see content like that. Like You just heard. <laughs> you just kind of heard, yeah. It's my turtle. Her name's Sally. She's a sulcata tortoise. She lives in my backyard. She yeah. dug her own burrow when I put her back there. It was sick. Yeah. She yeah. continues to improve it. Yeah. She lives through every rain. She's it's crazy. She's a girl. She gets it done. Yeah, it's raining today, it which is. is crazy. I love it. All right. All right. Yeah. It's like fucking never rains in September. What's what is this about? We had good rain before all, summertime. This yeah, all year, year long. So I, yeah. yeah well, I guess that's just the rhythm. Yeah. Uh, it it's welcome. So. Indeed. Uh, yeah, uh, fuck, what else do we pump here? We we, we talk about Patreon on the short rest a lot. Yeah, I think we're good, dude. Um, I think we got it. We're doing a new Patreon. Uh, shout outs next we have a, a P.O. box. I'm going to oh, go yeah. before the next round and see what's in there. Um, thanks to our recent advertisers. You can hit us up on uh, the dungeoncast at gmail.com if you're interested in that. We also advertise for Alien and Beer. It's kind of the reason they were created, all um, to do advertising in a fun way. Um, but we'll do advertising, however, because we like making that fucking shmoney. <laughs> we'll get it. Oh, check out Flashbang and the Surgeon. Oh, yeah. um, there should be some new episodes coming up. So I dropped on the 5th, so that means that... Two weeks after that, it's like the fucking nineteenth. Uh, nineteenth, yeah. Oh, some sometime around there, there should be new f bats. Um, season one's coming to a close, so you guys will check that out and hear that blog and all that. So thanks for everybody that does listen and chimes in on Discord. Uh, I love talking to you guys about it there, uh, and I guess we'll call it a game. Let's go to a game. We'll talk to you guys next time. I've just never had Cinnabon. I mean, I've had cinnamon buns, but they're not the same thing. No, Cinnabon's like its own um, weird, like, yeah. sp special thing. It is. <laughs> it is. But first time in my entire life, it, it was pretty good. I, I, we bought a bunch and went over to Omar's. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, and we heated them up there right after dinner, and it was, it was, it was good. <laughs> yeah, there's a Cinnabon at the Montclair Mall right here. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it's, that's, it's a lot like a Wetzel's Pretzels, like right. in its nicheness. Yes, yeah. in its nicheness.